What's up everybody? Mr. Dan here. Welcome to the Western Roundup tonight. Uh, tonight in the comments we have as a special guest the author of Gone Outlaw, Madison Thames. You can check out her YouTube channel. Of course I'll supply all the links and so forth. So the purpose of tonight is to review this book which I recently read. I went on a cruise and I took it with me and uh, I read the whole thing with days to spare during the cruise. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was very impressed by it. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, but first, because I wanna make this video about 15 to 20 minutes long to give more people a chance to learn about this, this uh, debut novel for Madison. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit. I'm gonna review the shootest, which is, you know, some of you saw me unbox this uh, deluxe arrow edition, which comes with all this, these extras here. And we're gonna take a look at Madison's channel real quick and see some of the chipmunk. A chipmunk threw me off, guys, sorry. Um, we're gonna look at some of the, the films that she's reacted to on her YouTube channel, which I highly recommend. She has a very pleasant, easygoing uh, style. Uh, she's very knowledgeable about Westerns in the West. And uh, the other day she started, she was, I started to watch her reaction to My Darling Clementine. I didn't realize that it had a lot of real powerhouses in it as far as acting goes. And that it, it was a, uh, a Wyatt Earp, uh, Doc Holliday, Tombstone, oh, you know, shoot out at the OK Corral movie. I, I had no idea. So I stopped the reaction. And then I watched the movie last night and then I finished the reaction today because I didn't want anything to be spoiled. Wow, what a good movie that was. But yeah, she, she finds some real good ones. But she hasn't seen The Shooters yet. So we're not going to do spoilers here. We're going to, the plot details are going to be very light in both cases with the book too. See, I don't want to tell you anything about the plot. I want you to read it for yourself. Anyway, let's do The Shooters here real quick. These are actually my reading glasses. Um, my kids think it's funny, but I, for real, they're actual bifocals. Uh, I won't be wronged, I won't be insulted, I won't be laid a hand on. I don't do these things to other people and I require the same from them. That's, that's the, the motto of the John Wayne character, John Bernard Brooks. Books, excuse me. He's the stuff of legend, a renowned shootist whose reputation looms large, but it's 1901. And then there's more, I'm not even going to read that. Uh, yeah, it's 1901, so the Old West is sort of going away, and it's, it's kind of a good time period to set this in, as uh, this is like the swan song, both of John, John Wayne's career and of his character, a legendary gunfighter. This is directed by Don Siegel. More about that in a moment. And it fe it's, this cast is incredible, really. It features not only Wayne, but Jimmy Stewart, James Stewart. Uh, I still need to stop by my Indiana, Pennsylvania, where I went to college and check out the Jimmy Stewart Museum. When I went to college there, they just had a statue, but now apparently they have a museum. Uh, Lauren Bacall, um, Ron Howard, young Ron Howard, but he plays Lauren Bacall's son. Scatman Crothers, uh, John Carradine, um, it also has Richard Boone, so the three of them that I just named, none of them were young either. And neither was Jimmy Stewart, who was actually having hearing problems when they made this. Uh, well, John, Mc John Carradine was never young, just like Walter Brennan was, ne was never young. Um, Richard Lentz, Harry Morgan, who's not young. Sherry North, Hugh O'Brien, uh, music by Elmer Bernstein. And who else did I want to mention? He's not on here. Bill McKinney is in this. Uh, when I opened this, I speculated, oh, Bill McKinney's going to play the, the young upstart. He said he wasn't actually that young either. I mean, this is only a few years after Deliverance, but he looked like he aged 10 years in the process. He's, he's a rough-looking customer. Uh, so essentially, he comes into town uh, after thwarting an attempted robbery, which I'll talk about in a moment, and uh, quickly draws the admiration and the scorn of people, depending on whether or not you've crossed paths with them before. So the Richard Boone character, who actually drives a car, uh, which is a new thing, you know, the, 
J.B. Brooks' character, Book's character, had a history with his brother. And then, you know, Bill McKinney's in the movie, so he's playing a tough guy because he's Bill McKinney. And then there's a third person who kind of will maybe conflict with the Book's character. I won't even say who it is, but I'll say this. His occupation in the town is different than what we usually see. But uh, it, it, that's different. And essentially, he comes in. He has enemies. The enemies, he, he basically gets a room in this sort of uh, bed and breakfast type place run by Lauren Bacall, who's a widower. Her son starts to idolize him. They clash because he's, he's got old world philosophies, even older than 1901. Um, her son starts to, you know, revere him. And uh, that, that kind of bothers her. Uh, he, he will, the son will sneak out and, and drink some whiskey with Scatman Crothers, a little sip here or there, who plays a, uh, a horse uh, tenderer. I don't, what's the word? Is it a teamster? You can stable your horses with him. I don't know what that word is. Harry Morgan plays an important figure in the town. His character is really interesting. He's such a beloved figure, mostly for MASH, but even going all the way back to Dragnet. Um, but he, he's, he's, very, he's kind of abrasive in this in a very subtle way. He's a really good role. Uh, Sherry North plays someone who's uh, a woman who's now in middle age who still kind of acts and wants to be like she's younger than she is. Richard Boone, I said, as I mentioned, he's looking rough in this. I mean, his, what a face. Uh, John Carradine is John Carradine. All in all, just a really good movie. Uh, some action scenes throughout, but it not like hit you over the head with action scenes. More of a character study and uh, a really excellent climax. Now, um, perhaps some of you have seen the uh, series on YouTube called A Word on Westerns, where this guy named Rob Word will interview people that have starred in westerns and the actor that played the gentleman or the robber who tried to rob John Wayne in the beginning uh, only to be thwarted he, he retold the story about how uh, after they finished that scene apparently Wayne said that's not how that's not how John Ford would have shot that scene so him and Don Siegel didn't really get along in this and you think about it Siegel had never worked with Wayne before when you think Don Siegel it's I think you think of Clint Eastwood. I mean, he was one of Eastwood's mentors. And then he even played a bartender in uh, Play Misty for Me, which I believe was uh, Eastwood's directorial debut. Yeah, of course, he all goes all the way back to the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers, but he never worked with Wayne before. So there was some friction. So here's the question. Is this a, an, a, an appropriate swan song for the career of John Wayne? And I think the answer is yes. When you consider what they had to deal with, with the health issues that a few members of the cast were experiencing, and with sort of that conflict behind the, the scenes, this is as good as we, we were gonna get. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good on its own. I mean, it's pretty darn good, in fact. And I'm glad, really glad I spent a little more than I usually do to get this Arrow edition. It's packed with stuff. It's so packed, in fact, that rather than slide everything out, I just kind of yanked it out and I broke both of those clips. So I'm pretty upset about that, but that's my fault. Anyway, that is my review of The Shootist. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen it. Um, but no spoilers, please, because Madison hasn't seen it and there's a lot of people out there that haven't seen it. Okay, real quick before we start the actual book review, let's just take a quick look at some of the films that Madison has reacted to. I think some of you might find some of these interesting. She doesn't always do the usual suspects that everybody else does. I'm not talking about the movie, The Usual Suspects. You know what I mean. Uh, recently, she's done My Darling Clementine, uh, The Black Stallion, Escape from Alcatraz, she did recently. Uh, speaking of Don Siegel, that was directed by Don Siegel. Seabiscuit. Now, as far as John Wayne movies, she's done Red River from 48. I've never seen that. And also... The Cowboys from the early 70s, so it'll be interesting to see how John, how we, how does he look in that film compared to The Shootist, which was about four years later. Uh, the Big Country, never seen that, and then, but she's also done uh, films like Blade Runner, one of, probably my favorite movie of all time, and Wait Until Dark, another one of my favorites, done uh, Psycho, 
And I think in the psycho reaction, she recognized Martin Bossom, the detective, as the jury foreman from 12 Angry Men, which she also did. So that's a good transition. I wonder, Madison, if you've seen Ombre starring Paul Newman and Martin Balsam. Uh, ex oh, El yeah. And this is an Elmore, from a novel by Elmore Leonard. I was gonna I'm going to mention him in a minute. So how about that? She's also done High Noon. And then my other question, two more questions about movies. Have you done any Walter Hill movies like The Long Riders? That's a, that's a really good one. And then there's another film. I don't think anyone on YouTube has reacted to this. It's a movie that has a Western feel, even though it's set on a space station. It's from the late 70s, I believe. Maybe early 80s. But it's in the not-so-distant future. So it's not a uh, sci-fi film with aliens and, and uh, cyborgs and so forth. But basically, Sean Connery plays the new marshal on a space station where there's some corruption. And that's actually what they call him. He's, he's a marshal on the space station. It has a very Western kind of a feel, despite the setting. So I wonder if maybe you heard of that one. Okay, guys, let's uh, get on to the book review. Okay, and now for the main part of the video, the actual book review itself. Uh, this will be a review that is very late on plot details, as I don't want to give any spoilers. I'm actually gonna describe less of it than is on the back cover. Uh, but let me start with this. Uh, a gripping story with a deft and evocative narrative style, authentically inhabiting the American frontier. An exciting debut, says Warren Fahey, New York Times bestselling author of Fragment. Yes, that, that's a very good description. Uh, gripping, evocative narrative style, yes. Authentic is a word that I was actually going to use. Uh, everything in here feels very authentic. The setting, the characters, the dialogue. It, it, just kept jumping out at me as I was reading the, the novel. Uh, a very brief plot description. This tells the story of a young lady named Dina Hance who lives with her parents. Uh, she has an older brother who's moved away to the big city because he doesn't want to be tied to a farm. And her father's having some problems running the farm. I won't go into detail. And uh, she is haunted by the death of her best friend in a botched robbery. 10 years earlier, and she has a chance encounter with an outlaw figure, uh, and they begin a relationship of sorts. Now, I'm using the word relationship in the loosest sense. They, they, they meet, and they meet again several times, and they become intertwined. They're sort of lives. But I'm, not, I'm not suggesting anything else beyond that. Uh, I'll let you fig read the novel to learn about that. But, uh, yeah, she just becomes sort of connected to these past events uh, and essentially catches up to her and uh, she has to take action essentially and this novel it just moves along I mean it's just page after page chapter after chapter I got to the point where I said uh, we were on the cruise and I said after our dinner I'm going to go back and finish this no matter what so I just had to finish it it's that kind of novel once you get close to the end you're just going to want to sit down and finish it uh, it's, it's just paced so well. But yeah, she has to take action. There's a posse involved. There's law enforcement involved. There's uh, some familial uh, conflict involved. And then within the criminal gang, there's, there's a lot of conflict. There's a pretty good cast of characters in here. The gang is quite large and very uh, well uh, fleshed out as far as the individual characters. The leader is named Sal. I'm just going to go with some first names, really. Uh, He's, he's a bad guy. I mean, he's, he's not a good guy. But he does. he's also got like a code, though, that you, he expects you to follow. Uh, he demands loyalty, and yet several members of the gang are start to have some problems with that. Uh, the person that Dina begins a relationship, again, I'm not suggesting anything. You can see the cover. I'm not going to give anything away. I'm not giving anything away. Uh, his name Joseph. He's an interest, very interesting character. He rides with a, a newer member of the gang named Inyeto, a native character, who's a really good, strong character. Um, you know, because the ties being what they were, he is sometimes bullied by townsfolk and members of the gang. And he has a different perspective. He, it, it's his backstory of why he joined the gang is very interesting. And within the gang, there's some other. There was a smaller gang that joined in with the big gang. And which is composed of uh, a few different, a few brothers, 
and they have like very different personalities too. Um, and then you have the law enforcement, you have the sheriff, some of whom, some of the law enforcement are more effective than others. And <laughs> I mean, this gang's been on the, the run for 10 years. So, and they actually engage the services of a manhunter named Lawrence, who specializes in this kind of thing. He is an excellent character. And then along the way, and I guess I'm about done with the plot. I'm just going to let you, again, please pick this up and, and check it out. It's, it's just so good. But I don't want to give anything else away. Uh, but as far as characters go along the way, even a lot of the, the relatively minor characters are pretty well fleshed out. There's a chance meeting with an older character named Obadiah. And uh, there's a scene where we learn about sheep shearing. And, you know, there's terminology in there that, that you know, I don't, it's not something I do in my spare time. So that was very interesting to hear about that process. And there's a doctor, I don't remember her last name. Her first name's Jill. So that was interesting. You have a town doctor who is a female doctor. It made me think of the old show, Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. It's not something I, I watched when it was on, but it kind of made me think of that. A lot of these characters I feel like, in Ghetto and, and Dr. Jill, I feel like uh, I would like to hear more of their story, their continuing adventures. Of course, this is Gone Outlaw, Sunset Legends, number one. So I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll get some of the same characters will return. Maybe it'll be all new characters, but you'll have to, you'll have to, you'll have to wait and see. But that's the, that's the way it is, like, with these characters. I really am so fascinated with, like, each and every one of them. Uh, it's just really well written. The dialogue, I mentioned Elmore Leonard before um, with Ombre. That's what this dialogue kind of reminds me of. I know most people think of his more modern works, and which many of which were made into films like Get Shorty. So you know, you, you, I'm not talking about like Detroit gangsters using you know four letter words at each other. Uh, his dialogue was very authentic to the setting and the time period. So he, like I mentioned before, he did write a lot of uh, westerns, which were turned into films. Another one would be uh, Valdez is Coming with Burt Lancaster, excellent, excellent, under appreciated film. But it's very authentic. And, uh, you know, Madison has a, a little bit of a closer connection to this geographic area and this lifestyle, having, you know, worked with uh, horses and at rodeos than, than I do. So I really appreciated that. Although we do have a rodeo in, in New Jersey, in uh, Cowtown, it's actually called. But, uh, so yeah, I, I feel like I learned a lot about the, the West and the, uh, the setting while I was reading the novel. Yes, the setting is very authentic too. I mean, we're talking about some pretty treacherous terrain that they have to ride over. There are rattlesnakes. Uh, it's very easy to lose your footing and wind up in a cave or something like that. Uh, there are sandstorms and, and that sort of thing. And all of that is very sort of authentically rendered in the book. And with about a minute left in the video, please leave your final comments in the comment section. If you kind of tuned in late or you want to come back and leave another comment, on the video, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, if you want to check out my last review, which is of a very unique early horror western called Curse of the Undead, uh, please go ahead and check that out. That was one of the more interesting films I stumbled upon recently. And of course, check out Madison's YouTube channel, her website, for all of her links, and also for news about the Sunset Legends Volume 2. And I will close... Thanks a lot for coming out, everybody. I will close by saying, uh, reading the other blurb here. Gone Outlaw is an incredible journey that had me captivated from the very beginning. Rob Wheathoff, uh, Red, Red Dead Redemption actor. Uh, so yeah, that's it for today. I appreciate everybody for coming out. Thanks a lot, and come back again. Thanks.